Good afternoon. Hello, hello. Sorry I'm a couple of minutes late. I was planning to start exactly on the dot, but then life happened. Technical difficulties happened. But here we are. Good afternoon. This is one of those things. You saying good morning every time. Usually my automatic response is good evening. But then when I do this game, I have to always actively think like, no, it's afternoon. <laughs> this is not my normal streaming time. So last time we finished. You're quite anxious today. Why? I'm hoping not for a bad reason, just a general like anxiety thing. As in, that's also still not fun, but although for this for a reason, you can sort of deal with the reason sometimes. Either way, being anxious is never good, so I hope it gets better soon. I'm good. I'm good. I don't know if it's hearable, but I have a little bit of a cold going on. Um, so if, the, like, I'm trying to... Brain sucks. That is always possible. Hi! How are you doing today, Lady Ulu? God, I can't say your name. I keep saying it wrong. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. But... How are you doing, Doodle? Also, Turtles, I hope your brain sucking stops soon. Um, as I was saying, I've got a little bit of a cold going on. Uh, not too bad, and I really wanted to stream. Um, but just if I sound a bit weird, that's why. I'm hoping it's not bad. Um, as I was saying as well, excited for game two. Exactly! Last time we finished game one. Part of why I'm a couple minutes late is that I find out found out that I might not have saved fully finishing case uh, si <laughs> fully finishing game one, so I've had to do a little different way to get into this um, instead of continuing the save file because it seems that I didn't save after the last bit, which is my own stupid fault. I know that, but it's always fun to start streaming and. <laughs> we'll just say Phoenix has a cold canonically. Yes, everybody in this game now has a cold. It's not bad. Like, it's just a little bit... Like, I'm just not 100%, but it's not bad. So, aka, I'm still streaming today. Because I really was excited, and I'm very excited for this. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I might have not accidentally not saved after finishing the last game. So, we're gonna... We're, we're starting a new game, according to the system. Uh, so now I need to keep an eye on where I'm saving this game. Episode 1, The Lost Turnabout. Let's see. Always a good question. That's far enough. You can't run forever. Mr. Phoenix, right? I saw somehow. I, oh my god! I was somehow waiting for like voice acting. What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Is that the judge? Silence! That is a judge. You are no longer worthy of your title. I don't know what the hell we're on. We're being hit. By the judge. I think this is a dream. I'm hoping this is a dream. September 8th, 9am, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number one. Ooh, we're getting some new... What a nightmare. And I bet I, it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. It was a dream. Good. Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah. Good. I finally found it. Who are you? Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. No? It seems like it. Exactly. Phoenix has excited dreams like the rest of us. A few minutes later, just record defendant lobby number one. Look, this is what we recognize. Ouch, my head, it's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in here? 
Good morning. Ah. Uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? The fire extinguisher. Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? <laughs> My head sort of hurts. Roger that. What's with all the red feathers? Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I had done something wrong. But what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? What? <laughs> I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix, right? Her name is Bird. Or Beardy. But her name is Bird. Life in my hands? You have promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. N not guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What is this girl babbling about? Very good question. Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting real strange and you keep staring at me. Bird is a good name. <laughs> You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Hmm. I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to me, to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just, well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... I'm... Who am I? <laughs> Why am I drawing a blank? <laughs> God, we got hit overhead hard, hard, didn't we? The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial is about to start. I'm cutting you in there, okay? Is this the convoluted way in which these, this game is trying to, like get you to do a tutorial. Hmm, I guess I must have amnesia. <laughs> Let's see, what can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. And that girl, I said I prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. I mean, you probably did it for a reason. Ah, someone, please tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? Good question. Oh, so why were you asleep at nine in the morning? Did you have a good night's sleep? Exactly, plot device amnesia. Getting hit over the head by a fire extinguisher. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Is that supposed to be a reference to like a magpie? Hello, Payne. It's been a while. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. Now then, are you ready? Memory extinguisher. <laughs> As I'll ever be. I guess I should say yes for now. <laughs> are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Wait a sec. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I've told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Well, on that note, actually, I have. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. We were not aware, but okay. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. Can we look in the court records? We've got a cell phone. We've got here. Time of death. Cars broken up. Body was also covered in bruises. 
found under the victim pier of nearsighted glasses were found nearby. Okay. There's a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? <laughs> it wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Good luck with that. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. Hey, hey, hey. It's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. feel like we shouldn't be a rookie, rookie anymore now. Okay, and who are you again? A pain in the butt, that's what he is. The prosecution calls Detective Dick Cumstu to the stand. Hey! Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. <laughs> Hello, buddy. How are you doing today? Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so you know. You work under that detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful Kai, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters. Exposé Park. Of course it's Exposé Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. Ooh, ouch. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah, yes. This autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. Are we going to have another time-related one? The results of the autopsy confirm the time of death. If I may, your honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well, the court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo 1 added to the court record. Now then, I recall at yesterday's preliminary hearing. Can we have a look at that picture, please? See, now we can see the whole picture. Oh, he's written something in the sand. He definitely didn't die on impact, but he's tried to write something. That's definitely going to be a thing. Okay. Broken egg body was also covered in bruises. I recall at Jesse's preliminary rearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, your honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess. Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? No, definitely not. There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually, um, it's just nerves. Give me a sec. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Well, I was a pro and then I got hit over the head. <laughs> All right, sir, I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court records. Court records? Yep, info about evidence and people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court records by pressing tab or this button. The only thing I recall is that she's a policewoman, the victim and a policeman. It seems he was dating the defendant. Prosecutor Winston Payne, there we go. Lacks presence, generally bad at getting his point across. Detective at the local precinct in charge of initial investigation. Perfect. Tab, huh? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor? Court is in session. Save your chit chat for later. S sorry, your honor. Well, I guess I'd better check the court records and see what I can find. What was it again? Tab? Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Glasses. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed his killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. And held onto them as he fell. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Mm. Yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses I found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? 
Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. Ugh. <laughs> Your honor. I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Okay, then. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. That's what I said. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she is the culprit. Hmm. This is a picture of the writing, your honor. Why? This is... Okay, so either it's the other way around than what I said. So somebody else pushed him, he immediately died on impact, and then somebody used his hands to write that with. Or he wanted to write some more. Yes, I can see her name. It's clearly written here. Like, we're gonna have somebody in Maggie something. Like a longer name somewhere. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. As if the glass alone didn't make you look suspicious, the victim even wrote your name. Clear as day on the ground. But, 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 I already told you, those glasses aren't mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy. I'm not guilty, sir. Okay. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witness's faces. Get in their faces and do what? I also hate paint smoke face, I agree. I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witnesses are hi all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why, when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Mr. Wright, you cross-examination, please. Y yes Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. <laughs> as long as I can expose the lies, we should be alright. Press everything. There we go. There's something even more incriminating glasses on the victim's body, sir. Um, about those glasses, do you have any proof that those belong to my client? The lenses are for nearsightedness and are almost the same strength as hers. Even the frames look kind of like the one she's wearing in her ID, pal. Hmm, what should I do now? Continue pressing. Hold it. Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Uh, um... Do you have more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Are, um, uh, <laughs> the dirt and sand rubbed out any trace of fingerprints or anything else? So what you're saying, detective, is that you have nothing that proves those glasses are my clients. Um, something like that. What, what, what? I see. Hmm. So there is no proof. Wow, that was amazing. I could totally feel it down in my gut. We've already got pain sweating. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. How do you know there was a date? Now, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but... What's the name that of my client? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name Maggie, sir. 
Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look at it, it still says Maggie. Hmm, he's got a point. Hey, hold on. Huh? Don't hurt me. I know the picture says Maggie, but now that she's mentioned it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. So that's what spotting contradiction feels like. I'd better check the court records again. Her name is spelt wrong. I think. Yeah, her name is spelt... So somebody else wrote it thinking that that's how her name was spelt. It's hard not to say she's a culprit. I'm gonna press on that. And then do the name thing. And you are certain that it was a victim who wrote the name on the ground. There were scratches on his fingers from the rough sand. And there were grains of sand stuck under his pointer fingernail. Hmm. It certainly seems that the name was written by the victim himself. That didn't go well. If the writer really was the victim himself, then we're in a lot of trouble. Don't give up. Keep that fighting spirit going. I'm glad you're all pumped up, but I really want to see your special move, sir. My what? You always look so cool when you present evidence. Present evidence? Oh, that present evidence. Actually, I was just thinking about that. Yes, the great Phoenix Wright is back. Oh, that's right. Huh? I heard that lately you can present not only evidence but people's profiles as well. It sure makes things a bit more complicated, so be careful, sir. People's profiles, huh? Alright, let's give this another try. Uh, da -da -da -da, present. Present. Objection. There we go. What? What is it? What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. There we go. What a rush. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. Y you talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see, this is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. What? Where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's uh, name is uh, Maggie Bird. Slap the table, exactly. I think someone needs to check the court records. What? It says right here that it is Maggie Bird. Ah! It looks like the bird caught the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh, how about that? I hadn't even noticed. We'll, we'll get Edgy Boy back, I, wa I want a bet. Considering Gumshoe's already back, but, 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 but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. They were dating. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover? If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to have not known her name. Exactly. This is very true. Mr. Payne. Y yes your honor? Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Y yes I am quite certain your honor. They were a well known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Is Maya coming back too? Yes! Yes, sir. I'm excited for Maya to come back. Dustin and Maggie. Officer Prince and Officer Bird had been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. That's a bit quick, but okay. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. 
Maggie, I mean Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had bought over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine a witness, Mr. Wright. Let's press everything again, although this one was in our favor. Bird had been going out for about half a year. How do you know about this? Every year in March, we have a training camp for us cops. Officer Bird was a rookie at the time, and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off. They got close, I take it. Actually, I was supposed to go too, but I couldn't pay the deposit for the trip, so I didn't. Yeah, what is her motive supposed to be? If only I had gone on that trip. What is it? Oh, uh, nothing, sir, really. Anyway. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. Marriage? But wasn't the victim eight years older than her? What? You saying a guy's gonna marry someone the same age as himself, pal? No, that's not what I meant at all. That act of gumshoe and Dustin were only a year apart, you know. Ugh, I think this fella has a way to go before marriage. Mind your own business, pal. The day of the incident... <laughs> I just got an achievement about getting him to say, Mind your own business, pal. <laughs> The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. The day of the incident? You mean September 6th? Yeah. The victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30pm that day. And since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. Ah, I remember when I was young and in love. Oh, it was a jolly time. That's great, Your Honor. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. <laughs> Maggie, I mean Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because uh, I'm her boss and I've got to watch out for my subordinates. But even what she was going to give as a present, isn't that going a bit too far? Eight years isn't that big a gap, I think. Hey pal, watch what you say. I know everything that happens under me. If someone so much as scratches their I really don't need to know that much. It is sad that he died. Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. I agree. Even if this witness has a crush on the defendant. That should not be the point of discussion at this time. Aww. Whoa, wait a second. Why are we talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. I should have you arrested. I think the good detective is about done here. It was something she had bought over two months ago. Over two months ago? Yep, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was his birthday present? She got him a glove. One glove? A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Um, actually, Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see. A baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. A baseball glove, hmm? Ooh, could he have been playing baseball and then fell off? Just now. I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made custom made the glove was custom made yep that's what I said hmm so the glove was custom made your honor I really don't see how this glove is related to this case yes it would seem that there is little relevance what do you think mr. right do you think this glove is really relevant to this case I feel like it is relevant. I just haven't figured yet out yet why exactly. Of 
course it's relevant. I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it is relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes, bluffing to the max. Now this is the Mr. Right I know. This is sad. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. Hmm, pressing people. It feels like I've done this before. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. <laughs> I spent a whole game doing that, buddy. Very well. If you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And... Why didn't you say so? Oh, is it going to be left-handed? Hurry and show the glove to the court. The glove is going to be left-handed, which proves he couldn't write with his right hand. Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with his case. Anyway... This is it, sir. I c I, I, huh? It's uh, rather yellow, isn't it? A birthday present from Mandy to the victim. It was custom made. Baseball glove added to the court record. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. Yeah, it is for the right hand, but this is now where my baseball knowledge lacks. I thought that if you were right-handed, you would have a left baseball glove so you could throw with your right. So... Yeah, exactly. He was left-handed, and on the writing in the picture, he was written with his right, which he then couldn't do because he is left-handed. And that's why you had to special order it? Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. There we go. I think this court has heard enough. It is clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. <laughs> we have solved it. Yes, sir. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Aha! Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was a sand tr that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. There we go. Hmm. Yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Da, 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 da. Written present. It doesn't say yet that it was for the left hand. But can you really determine handwriting based on a sample written in sand? Huh, this is why amateurs are amateurs. We're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Scientific investigation in this country is actually pretty good. Hmm, I believe it's time to get back to the real point. Agreed, Your Honor. So, what was the result of the investigation? Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There was, were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Oh wait, shit. I forgot to press. Mr. Mr. Right hand. Do you think it would have gone through that much of to give him his present? Yeah, thank you. Huh. I I was distracted, sorry. So in the end, you couldn't confirm it. Hey, don't you look down on us. I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with scientific investigation. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Me neither. Nor I. I never heard anything like that at the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up. Anyway... Next, we check the victim's pointer finger. His pointer finger. You know, the one you're always pointing and waving around in people's faces. Ah, ha, ha, ha. don't tell me it bothers you. Every time you do it, I have a mini heart attack. It's like you're trying to kill me, pal. In any case, you examined the victim's index finger, correct? Yes, we figured out there should be something on his finger if he had been writing in sand. Hmm, and the results? We found that there was sand trapped under the finger's fingernails. And what does that prove? 
Well, it proves that he did write that name with his own finger. Yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. There were scratches on the skin. Scratches on his skin. Yep, you can't see them with your naked eye, but they're there. That is incredible. Sure is, that's the power of scientific investigation. They're so small that we had to use a magnifying glass, like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific sounding name. A microscope? You mean a microscope? Yeah, that's it. We used one of those and that's how we found them. Congratulations? I can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. From this we could confirm. Are you absolutely sure? I believe in the power of science. Hmm, I wonder if my evidence is solid enough to counter with. Listening to this, you would think there was only one conclusion. That the name was definitely written by the victim. But don't you think that would be really strange? If it doesn't... Yeah, there we go. We're gonna press the last one with the glove, because the glove proves he's left-handed. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Um, never really thought about it, but uh, it's really yellow. And that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is also only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right. This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom-made. I have never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Well, um, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture. It was his... Wait, wait, wait a sec. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah! <laughs> I love the way he says objection. This is... That is... I mean, I object... Yeah, no. Overruled. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Somebody used his hand to write it. Order, order. When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that his name was written by the victim himself. Then that means Maggie is... N no, it's not possible, Mr. Payne. Y y yes, Your Honor. The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. All right, you did it, Mr. Wright. Who? I feel like I can breathe again. It seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? Ah, well, thank you, sir. See, you got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more than ready to retire. <laughs> I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. No, not yet. I mean, please give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What, what is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the sand. What? Oh, they're going to be the one that has done it. And what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the? Order. Order in the court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterwards, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. <laughs> Hmm, I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. 
Court is adjourned for recess. Defendant lobby number one. Ah, uh, amnesia. I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh, why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a real strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A Maggie kick should be all you need. Ah, no, 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 no. I think I'll pass on this one. <laughs> Come on. I'm- I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored to. Ah, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, 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 that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix Wright. What a weird name. <laughs> hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember? I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. Huh? This is a business card. I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. Ah. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay, there are some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Phoenix's business card added to the court record. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. Okay, I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. This case? Yeah, can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up then and tell me. This might be very important. Okay, Roger. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6pm. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. I like the song. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. Ooh, the person on the phone did it. The person on the phone did it. We agreed to meet up at 6pm. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Hmm. So where's the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is it that phone in my pocket? Y you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... Ah, you were here all along. Hi! You're so mean. I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check on the in the courtroom, everyone had already left. Ah, now, who in the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And a good morning to you, Maya. Maya! So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse and abysmal? Oh, and what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra decisive, super important evidence. Here you are, Nick. The thing you want me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has absolutely 20... It has... It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in... There is a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. A list of unfamiliar names and phone numbers, members of a con artist group. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? 
Don't look at me. Hmm? And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look it up this yes- Look- <laughs> You are the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm, so that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. <laughs> um, Maya? Actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, whoops, guess you have to get going. We can talk about this you being old later, Nick. <laughs> but wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Yeah. Ugh. It must be some kind of scam thing where he died. Or he was part of the group. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I ask that the court might be a bit, a little lenient on. There is no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Y yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness, a drifter who was taking it to walk in a park on the day of the murder. Ooh, hello. Please state your name for the court, witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk? D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a university student- Ooh, give just said a- Oh my god. Y yes I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. So, I didn't catch half of that, but I feel like it's a university student who is looking for the correct university, so not actually a university student. What, what is he? A human chatterbox? Uh, I have to question him? <laughs> Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course university. First rates only need apply. What? Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. That's enough. Your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you felt wrong. I'm sorry, I won't happen again. Oh man. I forgive you. Alright, I suppose I can- I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. Yeah, Maya's back, and this guy, which is the guy that hit us over the head with the fire extinguisher, I think, if I remember correctly, um, is now here, and he is a chatterbox. I cannot read all, his, all of his sentences out loud, because I can barely read it fast enough when, it's, when I'm not trying to say it. If you wanted to, you would call me a university student in transit. Ahem, Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a, uh, strolling... Through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in new, no way a pre prepubescent boy. Out on a walk with mommy. If you must know, I am... Anyway, please testify to the court what you saw during your walk through the park. He definitely did it. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know, you... What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. What did he say again about rubbing people the wrong way? He should just shut up. What I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6pm. All of a sudden, a police officer calls from above right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. 
Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Why? Oh, the glove! Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. The, the bananas is definitely going to be the glove. The bright yellow glove. He should just say that, but yeah. Like, decisive, Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say. How can you be so calm? It's so strange. My mind is very calm and clear. <laughs> Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. You may now question a witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. Let's go. I can't wait till we get to see him break. So you were at the park all afternoon. You seem to have a lot of free time. Hmm, that was very rude of you, but then again, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name trashy university. N no name? Trashy? Now, this might be hard for a mush-headed, mush feeble-minded baboon like you, but I have to think very carefully about the future of our great country. But I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. Oh, please. Which university I go to will directly affect the very future of this country? In what world, guy? In what world? What arrogant little snot. <laughs> I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6pm. How do you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... Is that the best you can do? Do you think you can discredit me like that? You're just a third-rate biased fool. I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. <sighs> His arrogance is really intolerable. So what should I do now? Press harder. Answer the question. How did you know what time it was? I can't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. Hmm, I guess I don't have a choice. I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. Oh my god, I hate him. There was this little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Do you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. Oh, so it is. I looked at that clock and that's how I knew the time. But if you ask me, this whole concept of breaking- Oh god, shut up. And yet again, another flood of meaningless words. Yeah, I agree, we need to slap the table with his head. Talk about a first class waste of time. <laughs> in any case. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. I definitely said that wrong before. How did you know he was a police officer? You obviously have no idea how powerful my deductive reasoning skills are, aka he was in uniform. With one glance, I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. That shoddy do-it-yourself house style practic- Oh my, cheap, low-quality shoes. And I suppose it was also because he was wearing an officer's uniform. Exactly. Shouldn't that statement have come first? Yeah. Whoa, that's pretty impressive. Hey, Nick, do you think he's figured out what I do? No, because you're not wearing a uniform. Even I haven't figured out that. I haven't figured that out yet. That's also true. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? Animals have this thing called an eye, Mr. Wright. They use this eye to see things. In the case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you. God. I don't care if I have them or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? That's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Wright not use such a loud voice during questioning. So state, Mr. Wright, please refrain from raising your voice in this court. Then please don't make me have to raise my voice. Are you finished? I'd like to continue if that's alright with you. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant over there. 
show you're sure you are not mistaken. Please, don't confuse your pitiful train wreck of a life with mine. Dude. I am what you call a famous brand name product, while you are only a cheap imitation. Dude! There is no way someone as magnificent as myself could have made a mistake. Oh, oh, we're gonna find out. Of course, of course. Oh, ho, ho, of course. Did you notice anything else of interest, witness? The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas? Now, what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. Maggie never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Hmm, he could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being a bananas at the crime scene. And what if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else, like I said, the glove. If he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would mean an inaccuracy. Think, Phoenix. Think. If my client is innocent, there's no way he could have seen what he says he did. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying, yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. She's right. She's got a sharp mind, but it's just wish I could remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? We remember you, Maya. Phoenix doesn't, but we do. Nope. Yeah, I know. I went too far again. I got better at this. Could it have been this very yellow looking glove? Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? But don't you think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me? And that's where you'd be wrong. M Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? W w what? A baseball glove? Ooh, yes. This is the satisfying bit. Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? That That's... That's not... It's a... No! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. I thought it would take longer to break him. This witness has bad eyesight. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How? What? You? Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. Oh, y y you're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who accept God. Shut up. I can't read this. He's he's claiming that from far away enough a glove can be mistaken for bananas. And that is why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. They're oh, plus they're both 2200. That's not how it works. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today then? Or am I confusing eyesight? I'm not used to eyesights being like that. I would also mistake that for a bunch of bananas, but I also, my eyes are bad. I don't know the, the 20 slash 200 thing. I never know how that works. I just know that like 2020 is like great eyesight. So I'm assuming 2200 is bad based on what they're saying, but that's just not how I learned to distinguish how bad your eyes are. So I'm assuming he's got bad eyesights. <laughs> Why are you not wearing your glasses, Steven? Ooh, ooh, are the glasses his? Um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them. How about when you witnessed a crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? How about it, witness? Y you are an unrelenting evil man. Okay, so... He is running a con in the park for some reason. He heard her name over the phone. Or heard her say her name over the phone. 
threw the dude down from up above. Didn't see that it was a glove, thought it was a bunch of bananas. Um, then went down and like wrote Maggie on the floor, thinking to frame her, and also then going, I saw her! Um, but it was him. I don't know what the motive is still. I've not figured that out yet, but it w I think it was definitely him. You're like those people who reject- oh god, never mind. I'm just giving up. When he just starts talking, I give up. Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. He was doing crime in the park. But the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm, witness. Please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Y yes your honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next, in the moments after you witnessed the crime. He was definitely doing crime. His crime is definitely talking. Just talking people out of stuff. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. The thing is, if he could barely see that the gloves nearby were as a glove, how could he see her face? After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. I must have been 6.45pm when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. That is their job. That is their actual job, to be there that quickly. Hmm, so the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone with a superior brain like mine can understand that... That girl is a murderer. Dude! Yeah, how did he see the time? Good question. You may question a witness now, Mr. Wright. What happened next? She ran away just like that? Yes, she did. She saw me and flew the nest like the guilty bird she is. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that pun too hard for someone who only got a third grade education? Actually, that did take me a few seconds to get. Anyway, if she ran away the instant she saw you, how could you tell it was my client? The witness has already answered that question. He has stated that the defendant is the culprit. This is true, Mr. Wright. I'm striking your question from the record. That was a very good question. Shut up. Hmm, how can I get more information out of him? After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime scene. Immediately? As in? As in, immediately. I mean, sure, a minute might have elapsed before I did, but I'm gonna have a look at the court records. 45 minutes elapsed, because he says he saw the fall and then immediately called the police. How did that ca take 45 minutes? That's the duty of every good citizen, or did they not teach that at your pitiful school? You've not even gone to school, I feel like you're not allowed to talk. You think people learn about how to call the police in college? Hey Nick, I thought you should take a look at the court record for a sec. I did. It must have been 6.45 when I made the call. How do you know what time it was? <laughs> That detective told me, you know which one I mean? The one with the jacket that t makes him look like a dropout from a no-name high school. Hey pal, I graduated from a pretty good, I mean top-ranked college. I don't believe this. It doesn't matter. I don't believe it was mistaken on what time I called. No, it took you for 17 minutes. And if I am wrong, then that detective obviously doesn't know how to tell me. What? Why you? You're just some lousy kid who... I think the court can see your point. Anyway, how did the police respond? They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. So you're saying that there was police on the scene by 7pm? They got there before that, I think. There usually aren't many people in that area at that time of day, but suddenly, before I knew it, there were people crawling all over, gawking. 
It certainly says something about the morals of the people in this country. I can't find anything out of the ordinary in his testimony. Why don't you take one more look at the court records? Mm-hmm. We're gonna press present this. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 628. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. He should stop with the school thing, it's very annoying. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45pm. There is clearly a 15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? <laughs> Why does he keep strangling himself with his own, like, neck, <laughs> neck thing? His, I want to say neckerchief, but it's not that, I think. I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15 minute gap. Uh. Why? The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. Dude, why? It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. I know that you don't like it, but we've already sort of proved that Maggie is innocent. So can you at least help us catch the actual dude that did it? Because you're currently just being annoying, Pain. 15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Mr. Wellington. Y yes Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, telephone, uh, I mean... He stopped talking. He is being a pain. Spit it out. I, I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions as if you're trying to open all the layers of a Matryoshka doll. You must think you're so really something special. Witness. I, I lost my cell phone. There. Are you happy? Oh, it's his cell phone. You lost it. Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. Wait, I want to have a look at the court records. Oh, I can't look at this. Never mind. I thought we could have a look at the list. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Aren't you ever heard that- oh god. Enough. Thank you, judge. I- every time he starts going off, I cannot read all of that. I'm sorry. Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick, that cell phone. Could it be? You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Question further. Mr. Wellington. Where is your cell phone right now? Huh, what are you getting all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See, here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we've declared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his search for a phone booth. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Huh. <sighs> He is a liar. There's, there must be something. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness's search for a phone. H how dare you? 
You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. Just one of these. There's the phone booth! It's right there! The phone booth is in the picture. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. <laughs> it's... It's a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Ah! <laughs> His arch face his arc face is annoying, but it's sorta of funny as well. Order! Order! What what does reporting the crime scene a little late prove to for the defense? Dude! You you are a prosecuting attorney. You should know that those types of inconsistencies are not good. The witness can't explain what he was doing for those fifteen minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Agreed. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet this phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said that she was going to return it to him. So there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Okay, I have a guess. He is a con man. Something to do with losing his phone and then going to pick up his phone. And Dustin tried to jump in and stop him, and then in a kerfuffle, he threw Justin over the edge. But my whole thing with all of this is Maggie was there. Why didn't she say anything? I also miss Edgy. I'm assuming, because this is pretty much just a tutorial case, so I'm assuming, like, in the next or case or so, we're gonna get Edgeworth back. Pain is a pain. Hmm, but if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else. Was he? Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? Hmm. Uh, yes, I have an I I, I have an idea. I don't know why. Yeah, that's my thing. Was Maggie there? Yes, I have an idea. There's only one possible explanation. He was writing Maggie. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalised. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honour. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Perhaps? Ah uh, ha That was just an idea I thought I'd throw out. Why is one of the witnesses always a murderer? Because otherwise, it's no fun. <laughs> the One Piece? The One Piece what? <laughs> I suggest that perhaps you should find a better piece of evidence. The One Piece of Evidence. Yes, of course, Your Honor. Well then. But before you do, you will be penalised. That was wrong? Ouch. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Broken neck, body covered pardon. They're found by. The one piece of evidence. I don't know, because the only thing in my head is this one. Like 15 minutes spent writing the name is the only thing that I could think of. 
Did he go looking for his phone? Throughout all of this, I'm confused, because if Maggie was there, why didn't she say anything about what she saw? Also, I feel like if... <laughs> that's a good question, but I feel like that's getting off topic. So, my one question is, Maggie was there. Supposedly, maybe. What did she see? And why are we not getting her story? My second question is... If Maggie had a phone call and that phone call was with him, why does she not recognize his voice? I think I'm just gonna present the phone. I feel like that might be the next one. Perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Perhaps? Never mind. Ahaha. Ah, Never mind. Why? I can't figure it out. I can't figure this one out. I don't know. Does somebody in chat know? Why didn't he call the police immediately? Glasses. Could he have could, could he have fallen on the on Wellington's glasses? Let's let's go with glasses. I can't think of anything else. Mr. Wellington. What what? Don't do that. You always gave me a heart attack. <laughs> These are your glasses, aren't they? Ah where where did you find I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. We haven't used them yet, no. We've just proven that there was no actual proof that they were hers. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, uh under the victim's body? Order, order. So he spent 15 minutes looking for his glasses. Now, wait a second. Hold on. I, I didn't confess or confirm uh, any anything. <laughs> Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and searched frantically for them. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. I think we got him. Or at least we're definitely getting there. Mr. Wright, are you are you indicting the witness as the real murder murderer? Of course, that is precisely what I am doing. Ooh I'm not screaming. That's too much of a cold for that. I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah, this is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Your Honor, the defense. The defense is making a mockery of this court. Dude, you are. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. You had no solid ground to stand on. Y yeah, yeah, that that's right. I, I'm no criminal. That this third-rate fraud of a lawyer. 
In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why? That's that's easy. Um, uh, for example, there's um, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Y yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie, and the film victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. It is good to see Maya again, yeah. But, 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 wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would that person know her name was Maggie or Maggie? That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Birds before this trial. Ah, I forgot. Hmm, was there any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? The phone. The phone call. It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now, will the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why, you, how did you... Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murderer? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. I like that she's wearing a blue badger top as well. The little hint of the last game. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, uh. <laughs> but you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? My client's name is Maggie, but the name that was written on the ground was Maggie. Dude. <laughs> this is a mistake that could only occur if you knew... If all you knew was how her name sounded. The blue badger is good. Order, order. <laughs> But, your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is? It's very simple, your honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. That is fair. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm. Mr. Wright, your honor, can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, your honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present this court proof that the witness had a motive. Basically, the only thing we haven't used yet is the list of con art, the list of numbers, so I'm gonna use that. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. Y you you looked up all those numbers? Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist's group. What? 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 C -c con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder. Dude! You're, you're one of those people. You're just like the cops who rape- oh god. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think you, any of you, know what it's like to be a refined man such as me? Obviously not. Your Honor, this- this is- this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is... a member of the group. 
Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um, I... I got you now. I, I, that, I, I, that police officer... Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this, this is, this is unjustified badgering of the witness. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. But, 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 please? Please, let's think about the content of that phone call. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. That is true. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Miss Bird to get his phone back. Why then would he need to kill anyone? Because he was police. Hmm, that is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Hmm. If you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if we think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Hmm, well, I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very unfriendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well, then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that didn't agree with the witness? Is it Phoenix's business card? Or no, wait, wait, wait. I I It's the fact that he was looking like a policeman. I think. Yeah, he was in uniform. That Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! The girl that picked up my phone is with a policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on the phone. And he went into a panic, is what you're saying. Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. I forgot you could present profiles. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, um, I'm thinking, obviously. Hmm. It seems the truth has come out at last. I agree, they were a cute couple. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... Oh, here we go. Oh my god, yes. Impressive. Not bad for a person with a third rate education. Shut up. Just shut up. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence. Evidence. Ugh, that guy is really creeping me out. All you've been waving around and talking about is that suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone number this, suspicious con group that, they're all not phone. But who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence? They were- yeah, it is sad that he died. It's great, I, I agree. Everyone's over the top. You want proof that this phone is yours? I already told you earlier. The phone that I lost, I've already found it. You don't even have the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? <laughs> Feels good to see you squirm. Hmm, we do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. Y Your Honor, this is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Hmm, this cell phone. 
There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be. Hmm, maybe. Fingerprints on the phone? Can we fingerprint in this game? I got it. We should check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off? I what? You said there was sand all over it, so... W wiped it? I wiped it? Pretty thoroughly, too. Oh, God. <laughs> Phoenix, you're an idiot. Oh, he's back to calm. Maybe the ringtone is the way to go. It's oh so much fun watching third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Ah, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see. Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the number stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You've got to be joking. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, you are too much. And of course you have no idea what I'm talking about. I- oh my- now I remember! Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. There we go. So that's when. What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's going to get off scot-free. I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. Wright. If you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who I am? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. If that will be all, I'll have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I like, yeah, I agree. I like the ringtone, but so far it's not come up as much as is a cool ringtone. I have a reservation at that ultra fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go at that? I'm going to raise an objection. Please wait, your honor. All right, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Y Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness, is that clear, Mr. Wright? Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well, but this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything, it's over for your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you are very well. Ooh, I'm sure you are well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh, now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything.
Is it this one? Because it's the only one we haven't used yet. I'm just... It, it's the only one we haven't used yet. Maybe the phone call... Phone... Why, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. Okay. It's written in ink is strong and clear, but I still can't read it. <laughs> Judge this business card added to the court record. Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there is something very important about that card, and that is the back of the card. The card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm, you wrote your cell phone number on the back, but... But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Because he would have still- like, there are still two phones, so one of them has to be Phoenix's. I pressed that accidentally. It's okay, you'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We are going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Of all the idiotic, stupid things to- Ah! What? What? Why is my phone... And what is with this stupid sounding ringtone? Well, Mr. Wellington. He stole Phoenix's phone. Hmm, how strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. That's the second phone. There we go. I was confused why there was two phones. Y your? Ah! No, 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 no. I can't. By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. Doo -doo -doo. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. Don't kill yourself, buddy. Oh, he fainted. So that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He is a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding. It's Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Ah, he has been arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. There we go. That is all. The court is adjourned. <laughs> She's so happy. I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I am so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, and never won or even tied at the game of tic-tac-toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. Aww. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the goddess of misfortune. And then, at the academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch on to those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently, too, sir. There was an old lady packing, pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand and before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. Oh. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. 
That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault, Dustin's death. Your head being all messed up. Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm going to find a new life for myself, starting now. Aww. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet, I'm gonna make it. I promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Y yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks. You take care of yourselves, too. Sigh. What a horrible day. <laughs> I've gotten my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Also, I agree. She deserves all the hugs. She, she's very sad. Come on. Let's go back to the office. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? <laughs> What? I thought you said you got your memory back. Yeah, but not all of it. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe. He is someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases, but he's also been a good ally during others. The judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who is really easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. Mr. Payne. This person. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> he seems to know me, but maybe he's mistaken me for someone else? And this girl. Maya. You, you finally remembered. This is Maya Fay, my assistant. That's right. I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example... Earth to Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me. Don't tell me you've missed me. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now. So it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. Aw. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick. Let's go to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back into my life. I hope we're going to see Edgy. And that story... That story began on one rainy afternoon, two months ago. Episode 1. The Lost Turnabout. The End. Nice. A brand new episode has been added. Reunion and turnabout. So, um, my plan is, because I do have a little bit of a cold, I don't want to start the next case. Uh, so, like what I've done before, we're going to watch like the intro video of the new case. And then I'm going to finish my stream, I think. I like watching the intro video. That was no accident. I was drugged. With sleeping pills. Sleeping pills. I was murdered. By that person. What? I will. That's why I took my revenge. It's only fair. Isn't it? Ini. What? I finally get to see you again, and... I was murdered two months ago, but I'm fine now. It's not your fault. You didn't do it. No, I, I did it. I killed that person. But that wasn't you. It doesn't matter. It might as well have been me. 
I will remember to save, although I don't usually save after the intro videos so we can re-watch the intro videos next time. I can't believe something like this happened. The events of that gloomy rainy afternoon that started this whole mess keep playing through my mind. Who are you? And I'm not going to find it out. Because <laughs> I saved just before the uh, intro video. So it'll be fine. If I go continue now, yeah, it's going to go into episode two. So it's all perfectly fine. It's just at the end of the last case, I've at the, like, la the final, final bit of the game, I forgot to save the last game. So yeah, next time, on to the second case of the second game. Thank you for joining me. It's nice to get into the second game. I'm excited to figure out who that dude was that we just saw and to find out what Maya's done and also how we got her out because we already know that she got out again because she's back to being his assistant. So, uh, thank you for joining me. I don't know yet when my next Ace Attorney stream is, I think, uh, but I'll be back like normal tomorrow for my normal regular scheduled stream. So I hope to see you then and otherwise... I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.